Thanks for joining us this evening on TKO8 Local News. Boone County Sheriff Mike Moore reports that two arrests were made in a theft case. The investigation is still ongoing and the public's help is requested. 39-year-old Brian Knight and his 49-year-old wife, Laurie Knight of Harrison, have been arrested in connection with that case. Moore said the residential burglary occurred just north of Harrison on March the 16th, where they found that about $50,000 worth of guns, jewelry, and coins had been stolen. Following up on the tip, the investigators went to the Knight's residence with a community correction officer. Police allege that two guns found at the residence were reported stolen in that burglary. Further investigation revealed that most of the stolen property had been taken to an abandoned home in Boone County where investigators recovered a large part of the stolen property. Both Knights face charges of residential burglary and theft of property, but Brian Knight also faces a charge of possession of firearms by a certain person. Moore encouraged anyone with information regarding the case to contact the Sheriff's Office. Two Mountain Home men were arrested Tuesday afternoon on drug charges. 53-year-old Johnny Collins and 51-year-old Frank D. Collins were arrested after officers found controlled substances and drug paraphernalia in the residence. Among the items found was Schedule Four controlled substances, syringes, smoking pipes, and a marijuana grinder. Johnny Collins is charged with a felon parole violation two misdemeanor counts of possession of a Schedule IV narcotic, and felony and misdemeanor charges of possession of drug paraphernalia. Frank Collins faces two misdemeanor counts of possession of a Schedule IV narcotic and felony and misdemeanor charges of possession of drug paraphernalia. Well, members of the Marion County Law Enforcement Committee are trying to figure out how to overcome the obstacles of building a new jail following the failure of a tax measure in the county. In a meeting on Monday, committee members added to the urgency of the situation that the fact is that state inspectors will be at the current jail in May. If the county is working on a plan and moving forward, the state is usually willing to work with them. However, if the county shows no plans, the state would be more likely to close down the jail. The Law Enforcement Committee will meet again at 6 p.m. on March the 28th at the Courthouse Annex Building. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission reports that a third case of chronic wasting disease among elk and white-tailed deer in Newton County was confirmed late Monday. The first case was found in an elk that tested positive in February. The second was a deer found dead early this month in the Ponca area. The new case involved a deer found dead north of Mount Sherman at the Camp Orr area on March the 2nd. Overall, the commission hopes to test at least 300 samples from the area and is requesting that any residents seeing ill deer or elk please contact them immediately. The commission is holding weekly public meetings in Jasper at Carroll Electric with the next meeting to be held March 24th and the 31st along with April the 7th beginning at 11 a.m. all three days. Harrison Park's department officials have decided to use a little band-aid approach with the youth center's pool to get it open for the summer and see if the city would be willing to help with repairs in the future. The Harrison Parks and Recreation Commission met at a special session Monday afternoon to see the problems with the pool and figure out how to fix them. Parks maintenance supervisor Jerry Farmer suggested that resealing the lights might cost up to $10,000. The commission voted to approve the suggestion and Chairman Jer Jerry Malin said that he and the Parks Director Chuck Eddy would talk to council, vice, uh, council Committee Chairman Mitch Magnus about the problem and see if the city might be able to help them out. Eddington also said there is a chance there are grants available for programs like the pool and he will be exploring those possibilities. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at some headline news from around the region as TKO8 News continues.
Woolworth Grocery wishes you and your family a happy Easter with these hopping specials. Best Choice Spiral Slice Whole or Half Ham, only $1.69 per pound. Select a variety's Best Choice Ice Cream, only 3 for $5. While supplies last, Hormel Little Sizzler Sausages, $0.99. Cents. Select a variety's Best Choice Whip Topping, only $0.79. Cents. And salted or unsalted Best Choice Butter Quarters, 2 for $4. Edwards Really, all of my life, I've had really terrible teeth. I knew that eventually I was going to have to have dentures. I asked around and found out that Dr. Wanda McCaskey was just an, an amazing person. When she said that she can help me and told me the process of how everything works, I was thrilled. Dr. Wanda McCaskey is an amazing lady. She's so much fun to be around. It was just a pleasant experience all the way around. Dental Creations on the Square in Harrison, next to the Big Red Boot. Sam Alexander Pharmacy has expanded and is now offering many additional products and services. Their new pharmaceutical compounding area allows them to create products to fit the unique needs of a customer. They also have added Spinco orthotic shoes and sandals, Dr. Comfort diabetic shoes, baby gifts by Aiden and Anias, and toys by Melissa and Doug. Stop in today and let them help you with any of your specialty pharmaceutical needs. Sam Alexander Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy in Harrison. Police say a registered level three sex offender used social media to lure young girls into exchanging nude photos with him. Osceola District Court Judge Donald Betron found probable cause Tuesday to charge Tyler Anton King with failure to register and sexual indecency with a child. After obtaining search warrants, detectives received two encrypted disks from the Facebook of two profiles that matched the King's personal information. As they reviewed the profiles, investigators found nude photos of females received in King's instant message as well as photos of male genitals he had sent in one particular exchange with a 12-year-old. King reportedly asked the girl to video chat with him, and she refused. Despite the girl's refusal, King engaged in more graphic sexual talk, and based on evidence, police completed on an affidavit and a warrant was issued for King's arrest. Judge Burton sent uh, set the bond for King at $125,000 and ordered him to appear in Blyville Circuit Court on April the 29th. A high-speed chase ended with a motorcycle crashing into the, to an Arkansas State Trooper's patrol car. According to Jonesboro Police report, two suspects led police on a high-speed chase on Interstate 555 Friday morning. As one of the suspects approached the on-ramp at Washington Avenue, one of the suspects lost control and fishtailed on the shoulder of the road, colliding with the state police vehicle. The suspect, later identified as Alvin Jackson, was taken into custody. After the crash, officers were able to find the second motorcycle driver, identified as Jeremy Stone. Arkansas State Police is investigating the case with assistance from the Jonesboro Police Department. A shooting in Blyville, Arkansas on Monday night sent one person to the hospital. According to Captain Scott Adams with the Blytheville Police Department, the victim, Travis Young, is at the med in Memphis, Tennessee with a single gunshot wound to the back. Adams says no one has been arrested as of news time. Adams added that Young's injuries did not appear to be life-threatening. Police have added that the case is now closed because the victim is not cooperating. John Brown University says it has received a $1 million gift to help fund an archaeological project in Jordan. The university says the gift from an anonymous donor will help to pay for the uh, excavation and conservation and restoration of any archaeological site, as well as their Jordan Summer Studies program, the Holy Lands Study Trip, uh, study trip, excuse me, and the biennial uh, lecture in biblical archaeological trip. So far, excavation at the uh, that the site has focused on five large. Uh, 
Bayanzin churches, 12 miles of water tunnels running under the city, a Roman bath complex, a Christian monastery, and hundreds of Roman and other tombs in the area. The university says it has sent more than 100 students, faculty, and staff, along with alumni, to work on the excavation of that project since back in 2006. Jonesboro Church has offered to buy a former fairground site just north of the Craighead County City. The Reverend Stan Ballard of the Nettleton Baptist Church says his church agreed to buy the 77-acre fairgrounds, an exposition building, two livestock facilities, and a maintenance building between Jonesboro and the community of Brooklyn. The Craighead County Fair Association filed for bankruptcy in October of 2014. Bankruptcy court approved the liquidation of the fairgrounds last fall because it was more than $9 million in debt. Ballard declined to disclose the sale price. He said the deal is expected to close in mid-April. Before we take a look at the weather forecast for the rest of the work week, here's the way the stock market ended today. Another very mild but extremely windy day as lake wind advisories continued for the second day in a row around the viewing area. This all ahead of a major thunderstorm area that could come into most of Arkansas in the overnight hours. It's going to be a very quick mover, but severe storms are expected, particularly in the southern part of Arkansas. We could see some as they move across the northern part of the state as well in the later morning, uh, early morning hours as well. And that system will move off to the east, uh, changing the temperatures slightly, but hopefully giving us some much needed rainfall. All the windy conditions have certainly dried out the surface and uh, not without some moisture. It looks like we will have burn bands kicking back into effect in the very near future. Here's the way it looks again on Thursday. That system will move through very quickly, cooling down for tomorrow, about 56 degrees from a daytime high, 67 this afternoon here in the viewing area, partly cloudy skies tomorrow. Then on uh, Friday, uh, 66 degrees, it warms up just a little bit with lots of sunshine out there, and the warm-up continues as we move into the weekend. 72 degrees on Saturday with lots of sunshine, but another system expected to get into the area on Sunday, drop the temperatures down to about 60 degrees. 60% chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms on Sunday. And then that system again moves across the state very quickly. And we kick off the work week on Monday with 67 degrees and lots of sunshine. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at sports from around the region as TK08 News continues. You're at the party having a great time. Your kids are on the dance floor shaking it for all they're worth. Then you hear it. That word that even your children know better than to use. Yeah, that word. So you think, doesn't the DJ know better? Man, my kids heard that. I'm Matt Duncan. I own and operate Artistry Entertainment DJ Service. I'm also a daddy. We never play questionable lyrics when kids are present, ever. Artistryentertainment.rocks. Yes, we get paid to party, and we take it seriously. It's out there. Something is definitely out there. Whatever it is, it's big. I won't play. I swear, we got so close I could spell it. But then, poof, it was gone. Right. It exists. The new Honda Pioneer 1000 with the best-in-class engine and six-speed fully automatic dual-clutch transmission. Pioneer 1000 from Honda. Many things have changed over the years, and so has Auto Body Repair. Even though Ozark Auto Body has been in business for over 30 years, they continue to change with the times. They believe protecting the environment is important and have done so by using environmentally friendly waterborne paint from PPG. This aligns with the technology used by original manufacturers and gives you a lifetime limited warranty. 
Quality PPG waterborne paint, ASC certified personnel, plus 24-hour towing service. Ozark Auto Body in Harrison, always taking pride in excellence. Spring has already started at Sisters Flower and Gift Shop. The ladies at Sisters have created some beautiful spring floor arrangements and new home accent items are arriving daily. You'll also find a great selection of centerpieces, unique birdhouses, wall decor, and many other great gift items. Come by and check out the many Razorback items on display. From handcrafted metalware, dinnerware, serving pieces, tabletop items, and cooking utensils, Sisters has just the right item for any occasion. Catch the spring fever at Sisters Flower and Gift Shop. We are so much more than flowers. of North Ark's annual Snowbird Classic <clears throat> excuse me, came down to one run. Sadly for the North Ark Pioneers, they were on the short end of that score. Lake Regions picked up a 7-6 to six win over North Ark. One run was put on the board in the top of the first for the Lake Regions team. North Ark answered with a single run of its own on Zach George's score and a, a pass ball. Lake Regions added three runs in the third inning and another three in the top of the fifth for a 7-1 to one lead. North Ark began chipping away at the deficit in the bottom of the fifth with two runs. The Pioneers then cut Lake Regions' lead to a single run in the bottom of the seventh inning. North Ark would put the tying run in the scoring position, but Lake Regions recorded the final two outs of the game to take the victory. And speaking of North Arkansas College, they had their season come to an end Friday evening in the National Junior College Athletic Association's National Tournament. Playing for a chance for the fifth place game, the Lady Pioneers faltered against Owens Community College of Finley, Ohio. They fell in the contest 79-65. The Lady Pioneers hit uh, 20 of 56 field goal attempts for 35%. They were one of nine from the three-point line with 11%, and North Ark was 24 of 27 from the free throw line for 88%, uh, 88%. Still a great year for the Lady Pioneers. Congratulations on your success. Missouri coach Barry Odom has announced that two football players are leaving the program. Running back Chase Appleton and offensive tackle Matt Sellier both Juniors notified Odom this week that their intentions is to end their football careers. Abington committed to Missouri in 2013 as a senior at Fort Zone Junior High at Fort June uh, Senior High School at St. Louis before playing two seasons at Hutchison's Community College. He had six carries for 39 yards and one catch for five yards during the 15-16 season. Cellular, also transferred from City College of San Francisco, appeared in eight games last season and played both left and right tackle. Defensive end Benson Mayo is set to join the Dallas Cowboys after the Raiders decided not to match an offer for the restricted free agent. The Cowboys last week signed Mayo to a three-year deal worth a little over $8 million, a deal Oakland could have matched to keep him. Mayo will add to a very thin defensive line in Dallas. The Cowboys are unlikely to bring back free agent Craig Hardy and will and be without Randy Gregory for the first four games next season because of his suspension for violating the NFL's substance abuse policy. After two games with Seattle as an undrafted rookie free agent out of Idaho in 2013, Mayo had 22 tackles, two sacks, and 28 games for the Raiders the past two seasons. And again, the Dallas Cowboys have agreed to terms of a two-year deal with running back Alfred Morris. 27-year-old Morris started every game in the first four NFL seasons with the Washington Redskins, racking up 4,713 yards rushing and 29 touchdowns. Morris adds more talent to the Dallas backfield, which already includes Darren McFadden and Lance Dunbar. Morris also has three 1,000-yard rushing seasons on his resume and two trips to the Pro Bowl. His departure means that the Redskins could turn to Matt Jones as their everyday back, bring back Perry Thomas to share the carries, or look to draft a backfield help. Well, that wraps up our broadcast here for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Join us Monday through Friday at 6.30 and again at 10 p.m. As we continue to bring you local news, weather, sports, and local announcements from around the area on Harrison's broadcast station, DKO Channel 8. Now stay tuned for more local events around the